So we're gonna get into the scapula and we're gonna look at the posterior view, aka the back of the scapula. So the shape of the scapula is more of a triangular shape. So one, two, and three. You're gonna start off with the general uh, picture of the scapula, such as one, two, and three. We're gonna start off with the superior angle right here. Perfect, and this is the medial border. And then at the bottom right here is the inferior border. And then you got the lateral view, lateral border. And you got, okay, and you got the glenoid cavity. And from the back points, we're gonna start off like this, the spine of scapula. Awesome. So you got the general shape of the scapula. So let's fill in the gaps. You got the medial border. And then you got the lateral border. So medial is more to the midline, such as right here. This is the medial border very close to the midline. So it's on the medial side. And then away from the midline, it's called lateral. Anything away is lateral. Now let's label the anatomy of the scapula. So you got the superior angle. So remember, every time there is a superior, there is an inferior. Then you got the spinal scapula. Then you got the glenoid cavity. This portion, you might not see it right away, but it, you will see it on the lateral view. And then you got the acromion process. And to the fine details, you have a small scapular notch. So you got the superior glenoid tubercle. Tuber and just like that, you got the inferior. So now you got the general format of the scapula. Now we're gonna get into the fossa, which is the indent of the scapula. So you got the infraspinous fossa, and then you got the supraspinous fossa. So now we got the posterior view. Let's look into the lateral view. So the lateral view is very simple. You're not going to see too much of things, but you will see a couple of major points, which is the acromion, acromion process, the coracoid process, then you got the glenoid cavity. I'm going to start off by drawing a circle to resemble our glenoid cavity. Perfect. Then you got the lateral view and you got the acromion process and you got the coracoid process got the inferior angle lateral border got the acromion process You got the coracoid process. And you got the spine of scapula. Very minor detail, but you see it more on the posterior view. So that's a very general format of the lateral view of the scapula. So let's get into the anterior view, which is the inner portion of the scapula. Perfect.
It might be a chromium process. And then you got the coracoid process. Pretty much refreshing our minds on uh, everything here. You got the lateral border. You got the medial border. You got the inferior angle. You got the superior angle. The scapular notch. You got the acromion process. You got the coracoid process. You got the glenoid cavity. A superior and inferior glenoid tubercle. And then, pretty much, the inner portion of the scapula is called subscapular fossa. So, as you can see, getting a couple of colors and breaking down the scapula in different planes of view, you can actually learn a lot from. So, try it out and find out how much you know and, if anything, how much you gain. So now we're going to talk about the muscles that attach onto the scapula, not originate from the scapula. So you have a lot of layers on your human body and the first layer is obviously the trapezius muscle. Starts from the base of the head, goes down to the lower portion of your ribs, T12, and then attaches onto the medial border, lateral one third, and clavicle. So after the trapezius muscle, you got the rhomboids, which start off at the lower portion, upper portion of your T-spine and goes into the mid portion of your T-spine and attaches to the border of the scapula, the medial border. So from there, you got the Leviator scapula which attaches from C1 to C4 and then it goes to the medial border but the superior portion. Okay, so now that we talked about the structures around, you got a muscle called serratus anterior. Basically a punching muscle. Every time you throw a punch, that slight extension forward is the muscle being activated. Then you got the very big muscle important for the majority of the range of motion of your shoulder, which is the deltoids. It starts at the lateral portion of your clavicle, delt, uh, spinal scapula, and attaches onto the and attaches onto the deltoid tubercle. So the last muscle that we're going to be talking about is the pec minor. Starts at the coracoid process and then attaches to rib 3, 4, and 5. So we're going to be talking about the muscles that originate from the scapula and insert onto the humerus itself. So aka the rotator cuff muscles. So with the rotator cuff muscles, you got the supraspinatus, which is starting at the supraspinous fossa. Then you got the infraspinatus, and you got the teres minor, and then from there, it attaches on the inner portion of your humerus, but it starts over here, which is teres major. And then if we look at the inner portion of your scapula, you got the subscapularis. So supraspinatus, you got the infraspinatus, you got teres minor, teres major, you got the subscapularis. Awesome. So as you can see with a couple of markers, and a whiteboard, you can accomplish a lot of things, but you can do it on a small scale. Get yourself colored pencils, markers, uh, anything that requires differentiating different types of words, and it will help out. You will actually learn a lot. As you can see, we added very minor things, but in, in the bigger picture, it becomes very detailed. So, since we had complete the major portion of the scapula, our next video we're going to be talking about the origin insertion of these muscles, the actions it performs, and the nerve. 
And from there, if you have any questions, concerns, any suggestions that you want to leave for us, comment down below. Make sure you subscribe to our channel and, and keep you updated on our social media at Northern Therapy. And if you want to have an RMT session by us, uh, very highly dedicated individuals, book online. You won't regret it. We're going to leave the uh, booking system and our website in our uh, bio. So check it out. Let us know how it is. So thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed this art lesson slash anatomy and we'll see you on our next video.